Hi, in the last session, we talked about the MIMO concept in 5G and we discussed that how 5G RAIN can be benefited from multiple input, multiple output concepts. Now, in this session, we will be talking about 5G spectrum. So, spectrum plays an important role in a wireless communication. So, first, we will understand that what innovations 5G brings in terms of spectrum utilization. Here, you can see that 5G NR spectrum options are divided into two frequency ranges. First is FR1 or frequency range 1 and second is frequency range 2 or FR2. Frequency range 1 or FR1 includes the bands which are below 6 GHz and having the carrier bandwidth from 5 MHz to 100 MHz. So bands in frequency range 1 or FR1 have lower frequencies which provides better propagation characteristics. So they are ideal for coverage from macro base stations. Frequency range 2 or FR2 covers the band which are above 24 GHz and they can offer channel bandwidths between 50 MHz to 400 MHz. However, FR2 bands have poor penetrations through obstacles like walls, buildings, etc. But they can offer larger bandwidth. So these characteristics make them suitable for high density locations and hot spots such like city centers, stadiums, etc. Now let's see that how the spectrum utilization evolves over the time. Here you can see the allocation and the utilization of a spectrum over time. Green one indicates the 4G and blue one indicates the 5G here. Initially, a significant portion of a newly allocated spectrum is dedicated to 5G. But over the time, more spectrum from the existing 4G spectrum will be reformed to use for 5G. And this will allow us to get the benefit of higher spectral efficiency from 5G NR radio. So it's important to understand that 5G NR brings higher spectral efficiency through the different mechanisms. Let's look on two of them now. First, in this example of 20 MHz spectrum, LTE has 100 subcarriers and each of them is 15 kHz wide. Whereas NR can accommodate 106 subscribers from the same 20 MHz bandwidth at the same 15 kHz spacing and this happens due to reduced guard bands. Additionally, NR uses new channel coding options. While LTE relies on the turbo codes, NR uses low density parity checks codes or LDPC codes which are significantly more efficient especially for the large transport blocks. This makes them ideal for the data channels. Secondly, NR also employs polar codes which offers about 0.5 dB gain over the turbo codes, which make them suitable for the control traffic. NR supports wideband carriers, which offers up to 100 MHz of bandwidth from bands below 6 GHz and up to 400 MHz from the bands which are above 24 GHz. These bands can also be aggregated through the carrier aggregations to achieve even higher data rates. In phase 1 of 5G NR, operators can aggregate up to 16 component carriers and up to 1 GHz of total spectrum to be utilized. And these component carriers can be contiguous, non-contiguous, intraband and can be intraband as well. So there is lot of flexibility there in the deployment. In addition, there is one more spectrum related concept in NR called bandwidth part. Most base stations can utilize the wider bandwidths available in 5G. However, user equipment capabilities can be different for different handsets and hence it will be more challenging for some UEs to use that larger available bandwidth. For example, some low cost smartphones may struggle to utilize the full bandwidth or the full capacity of the bandwidth. Even if a UE is capable of using wide bandwidth, but maybe it do not need to use wide bandwidth continuously. For example, the UE just transferring a very small amount of data like notification or small messages etc. So there is no need to use wide bandwidth in such needs. Wide bandwidth also drains more battery. So it is also impacts the battery life of the device. So considering all these requirements, NR introduced bandwidth part. A bandwidth part or BWP in short is a subset of contiguous resources block on a carrier. You can see this in the picture. Here you have one single carrier at the top and it has multiple bandwidth parts like BWP1 and BWP2. Like a wider bandwidth part is in blue color and the narrower bandwidth part is in green color. 
Now here is the important thing that each of these bandwidth bar on a carrier they can both have different numerology. This means they can be completely different in subcarrier spacing, symbol duration and cyclic prefix lengths etc. There is also a lot of flexibility that how the bandwidth parts can be set up in a carrier as seen in the figure. A UE can be configured with up to 4 bandwidth parts but only one can be active at any specific one point of time. For example, when a smartphone has a busty data to send, then the network configures that device for a wider bandwidth part. And when there is a very little data to send, then the network will configure that UE for a narrower bandwidth part. And hence, the network resources can be utilized properly and it saves the battery life of the devices as well. Okay, so that's it for today. I believe you get some insights on spectrum allocations in 5G NR. We discussed about some of the concepts in 5G NR2 like carrier aggregation and bandwidth part which are important for optimizing the 5G performance and network efficiency. In the next session, we will be talking about another important concept in 5G NR and that is dual connectivity. So stay tuned for the updates. If you did not subscribe till now, then please do subscribe to learn and grow community for regular updates. If this video is informative, then please like this video, comment on video and don't forget to share. Thank you for watching.